know, Mark, as always, first and foremost, uh, thank you for doing what you do, for allowing me to just present my platform to the people out there. And I, I'm going to tell you, from the feedback that I get from people, they enjoy it. And so I thank the viewers for enjoying what we talk about, you know, it seems like once a month now. I'm uh, Cyron Smith, uh, community activist, organizer, philanthropist, uh, office manager at an accounting firm, and right now the candidate for the 15th Ward City Council here in the city of Chicago. Uh, what I always tell people, uh, I'm not a politician. I'm a person who care about people running in, now in the political arena. And the reason I'm running, if uh, anyone has noticed, Chicago has been and continue to be the most dangerous city in this country, in America. And, and I always tell people, uh, don't drink the Kool-Aid that Detroit or New Orleans are more dangerous because they go by the per capita. We know that in, in raw numbers, Chicago has more murders than Los Angeles and New York, even though we have less people. And these murders are occurring in concentrated neighborhoods. So that is why I do what I do every single day because I think we have to make it safe for the average person in Chicago. So that's the number one platform, is the violence. And, and anyone, uh, I don't know when this is going to air, but we had two police officers murdered this week, too. Now, some cities go without a murder of their officer in five or six years. We had two murdered this week alone. I want to say five or six for the 2010 year. Totally, totally unacceptable. Unacceptable that we have over 380 murders so far in this city. And the sad part about it, I believe we've become desensitized to murder. I believe that uh, there's some people who don't live in our communities and they say that's sad and then they go right back to Black Friday and Christmas shopping. I believe there's certain people in the neighborhoods where it's occurring and saying, you know what, there's no hope, I'm just going to live my life. And I believe we need a leader, uh, someone who can stand and say, you know what, let's care again. Uh, I read in the Sun-Times today, in the Sunday Sun-Times, the mother of the young man that was murdered, uh, someone burglarized his home, police was out there doing uh, the evidence, uh, checking for the evidence, and both of them were slain. And she saw what she believed, the assailant running down the alley, and she said, we just don't care anymore. And, and once again, you need, we need an alderman, we need politicians who care about the average person, not just the special interest. So enough about the violence and, and that. That's my number one platform. I want to make that very clear to people. Um, the other reasons I'm running is because we lack transparency, accountability in our government. Um, finally, Mayor Daley is going to step down, and, and I believe that's good for the, the nation, uh, especially us here in Chicago. We need a strong city council, weak mayor. <laughs> that would be the ideal scenario. Strong council, weak mayor. Because what that means is you have 50 people that you can go to and give your concerns to. You stay within your, your ward, of course, but even if you don't get what you're looking for from your ward, you can go to the other wards as well because we pay all of their salaries. So you have access to 50 people to voice your concern to versus being dependent on just a mayor who might not be accessible. So I really believe we have to have strong council members and a mayor that listens to the council members because we represent, or I'm saying we like I'm in there already. <laughs> uh, once elected, we will represent the voice of the people in precinct by precinct within our ward. So we have to make certain that we elect people who has integrity. If you look at, uh, you can Google my name. If you look up Cyron Smith on YouTube, you will see a history and a track record of service and service across multiple lines, senior, senior citizen service, the youth service, um, people who've been murdered, the morning uh, uh, family member service, you see me working with uh, on education issues, safety issues, so that's what you want to look for and hold people like myself accountable. Don't come and just let me come and say sign my petition, this is what I plan to do. Uh, I heard Reverend Meek speak on um, Channel 11 and he said something that was profound, I, I thought. She, uh, Karen Morin, I believe that's her name, she asked him, she said, give me something to tell the viewers on why they should vote for you. And Reverend Meek said, you know, he gave the cliche stuff, you know, vote for me because of this, this, and this. And she said, give me more, give me some specific things you're going to uh, fight for and positions you're going to take up. And he said, What's, uh, the best thing for viewers to do is to look at what I have been doing 
so that you can gauge and make an intelligent decision on what I will probably do once elected. And I think that is critical. Look at that person's history. And Reverend Meeks was speaking about him fighting for vouchers so that every child would have a quality access to a quality education and whatnot. So uh, he's saying, look at what I fought for then. If you vote for me, I can fight for this going forward. Cyron Smith, if you look at me back in the past, you see I'm out there with uh, victims who've been shot, killed, stabbed, and raped. You see I'm working with the young people with our Lawyers Club every Friday right here in this office. They are practicing becoming lawyers. And I'm not an attorney. I'm an office manager. But I've said that we need to make certain that we get the young people organized around what they want to do, what they want to grow up to be, and then we link them to people who's doing it. So every Friday night in this office, 7 and 9 o'clock, young people out here practicing different cases. Every Saturday, right back here in this office, we have about uh, 15 to 20 teenagers. Some are being deployed out in the 15 war, going out there, talking to people block by block, finding out what's important to them. Uh, this weekend, they found out one guy got his car booted, uh, so they got his information so we can come back and we can help make phone calls for him because uh, apparently the, the, the people tell him he has to pay it all, he can't get on the payment plan. So we got 18 year olds helping you know, this guy in his 40s with a parking uh, boot situation. They also are in here between 6 and 8 on Saturday discussing drugs, gangs, sex. A week ago we talked about uh, the whole gay and lesbian uh, movement here and they voiced their honest uh, perceptors on perspectives on that and of course the grown-ups myself we give our input but we want them to express themselves I believe if we give our young people the opportunity they will be able to make decisions that we'll be surprised by uh, on Fridays also the young people go out and they help the seniors we had an 80 year old when I was getting my petition signed she said you know what I'm tired of people saying sign for me and you never see them again I said, well, ma'am, every Friday is Senior Citizens Day for us, so, you know, Friday I can bring some young people here and we'll do whatever service you need them to do. She said, well, I have a bunch of leaves in my backyard. I can't deal with that. Can you take care of that? Friday we was there. We had the young people out there raking their leaves. So that's my history and my track record. And once again, look at that when you make your decision on who to vote for. Now, uh, there's 10 people running in the 15th Ward. Our boundaries are... On the east, it's Ashland. On the west, it goes from Ashland all the way to Central Park. So 1600 west to 3600 west. On the north side, it's uh, Garfield on some parts, which is 5500 south. And it goes to Marquette, which is 6700 south. So those are the boundaries. Um, a couple years back, we had 26,000 people registered to vote here in the 15th Ward. 26,000. We had 9,000 come out to actually vote. We had 7,000 come out to vote in 2007. And then just last November 2nd, 2010, we had 9,200 come out to vote, which is very high for, for our area. Some precincts had 48% turnout, which is pretty good. So the, the point is we have a lot of voters who haven't been energized enough to come out to vote. There's some people on my team who say that's unacceptable you better vote. <laughs> the ancestors died for this right. Uh, and, and I agree with that to a certain point, but I also agree with the argument of residents who say, you know what, I hear the same thing from you guys, I don't see the action, so I'm not exercising my right. And so I hear that argument, and what I want to plead to you is that uh, I will come to your block, I will come to your house, your family gathering, uh, I'm a people person, so I want to be right there to help you along the way. Uh, my, my whole passion is through my military background is helping people achieve their they potential and whatnot. So I'm, I'm willing to do that. And the other nine candidates that's running, I, I know a good majority of them, and, and I would say their hearts are in the right place. Uh, I don't see any uh, evil spirits out of the nine other people running. But I'm just telling you I have a plan. I have a plan that will help us in multiple facets, not just education, not just safety, but the multitude. And I think I'm young enough to energize our young population that definitely seems like they have given up on, on a lot of things civically and, you know, I think I can energize them. So that's uh, one of the big issues that I want to push forward to you guys.